Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Information. My name is Brent Gill. I am your host. And that right there was Groove Holmes from Beastie Boys, uh, the in sounds from Way Out. If you don't know that album, I highly recommend you check that out. It is a all-instrumental album that the Beastie Boys did back in 96 because I like to keep my music taste up to par, you know, up to up to date. Uh, fantastic album. Make sure you check that out. I am just saying all these credits in case they hear this and want to sue me. At least I gave them full credit for it. So uh, joining us today, we have a Fantastic episode. Uh, we have such a good lineup of stories, uh, including a uh, raceless, a, ra- a raceless, a racist dude from Portland uh, who cries after being arrested for hate speech. Uh, a Florida mayoral candidate uh, who is also racist as fuck, telling black people to go back to Africa. And of course, a man in Fort Lauderdale who robbed the bank to start his comedy career. A lot of stuff in Florida this week. Uh, happy to get this show rolling. My guest today is Nathan Lund, the Denver comedy champion. Nathan Lund. Nathan, how are you? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Of man. course. Welcome to the show. I've been uh, I'm happy to have you back. You've done the live show a whole bunch. Sure. First time podcast. Now, you call yourself the Denver comedy champion, uh, slash you are the Denver comedy champion. Sure. Uh, what the fuck is a Denver comedy <laughs> champion? Because I have been doing comedy here for quite some time, and uh, I have never been up for the belt of champion. So what That's is true. this? So it was a fun thing. It really uh, came when a bunch of our friends were moving from yeah. Denver. It was, you know, it was like uh, two years ago. A lot of our, just a cluster of people, you know, moved. left real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, right around the same time, and it was all anybody was talking about. It was like this sad thing for all these, you <laughs> yeah, know, for I, some comics. I remember that. Yeah, they they were like. You know, it was like they were upset about it. And it's like, that's it's a good thing. That's why we're moving. Yeah, it's a positive thing. Yeah, you were these comics were incubated here and and raised here. Right. And now they're ready to to go out, spread their wings and, uh, you know, and see what they can do in L.A., like in the real, you know, in the real scene. Not that there isn't a real scene, but right. It's it is a it's a scene, but it's not the but it's not a big. Yeah, it's not a big scene. It's growing and it's sure. a, it's a positive, supportive, good, you know. Well, I think that's the biggest thing about our scene is it is positive and supportive, which yeah. is some, because we're I feel like we're such an island here in the middle of the country. Mm-hmm. There's nothing near us, so we are the biggest thing to happen to mm-hmm. the Midwest, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, and yeah. and I think that that because there isn't that uh, pressure of well, you know the the industry is there or all the comics are here and there. But Mm -hmm. so I think that's it. That is kind of what led to our scene being a little more supportive. Uh, do you think Mm -hmm. it's still that way? Less, not as, not as cutthroat competitive. Correct. Because we want everyone to succeed because it's one team, one dream here. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Uh, yeah, I know it is, it is still supportive for sure. But, uh, you know, some people think that, that the scene isn't always supportive of everyone, which is impossible. Sure. That's not how it works. Sure. If you work hard and if you get funnier and funnier and if you're nice and you know you kind of humble, you realize that none you you don't deserve anything. You, there's nothing that you can expect mm-hmm. to get after X amount of t- time put in or you know Y amount of tears shed. You know it, yeah. it doesn't translate directly to you know something specific that you're given. You know sure. that, that 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 you're awarded. So that makes it tough, and that's everywhere. Right, and so. But yeah, we're still very supportive. I was so happy for Stephen AJ to get those his first headlining dates. Yeah. It's so fun. Like, yeah, yeah. And it, it would be stupid for me to be like, Ugh, it should have been me. Well, why? Why would it have been me? I didn't sure. ask. I didn't pursue it. I'm just trying to do my thing. He is doing his thing and then gets these dates. And I opened for him. You know, the first the first show at the yeah. South Club, and it was yeah. incredible. That's I had so much great. fun. Yeah, yeah. Why would I be in my own head about me? Me? What about me? You know, that's stupid. Well, that's, that's a waste, hard. It's, it's a waste hard, though, to not be in your head because this whole sure. business is competitive. You know what I mean? And it it, it, it's nice to hear that from other people because I know when uh, I was talking with Chris Charpentier, mm. uh, old, old daddy o, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Sharpie brought up some good points. He's like, you know, I, I, I could be angry about this. I could be resentful. But at the same time, the, the way that he looks at it and is now the way that I look at it is it's going to be cool when it's my turn to do that. Yeah. Like it's my turn for Montreal or my turn yeah. for the, the special or my turn to headline or whatever it is. Yeah. And I think that that's a, uh, a really big um, 
uh, thing that that people lose track of because yeah. we all we all want it, but there's only so many spots. Right, and yeah, and there's no there's no specific timeline where it's like after you've been doing it for five years, you get this call, or yeah. you, you know, you're given right. this email address. It's not to, a corporate job like we would know. Yeah, it, yeah, it's not that structured, and so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I used to, I make it sound like I've always been, you know, completely grounded and fucking humble or whatever. That's not always been the case. I've certainly been jealous. <laughs> the or, new Nathan Lund here. Well, but the older you get, I think the better you get about it. And so that's been the case with me where I've mellowed out. Yeah. And if anything, you know, regardless of how mellow you are, a good thing to realize is that if your peers are getting things... And they are your peers. Yeah. If, you, if you're similarly funny or hardworking, and on that same level, like same, the same level, grade, like almost same yeah. class, whatever, yeah. yeah. Then, if anything, it should be encouraging because it means that you're on the right track. Right. It means that you're doing the right things. They were doing the right things, and they got noticed. If you're doing the right things, you'll probably get noticed. Yeah, yeah. And I've read a lot of, uh, <laughs> you know, interviews with comics or books. You know that are, you know compilations of interviews with. Uh, comics and writers and uh i just finished poking a dead frog which was great interviews with uh all kinds <laughs> that of sentence funny... sounds really funny though <laughs> i just finished poking a dead frog it yeah was... <laughs> <laughs> right, right before i came here i'm sure you did nathan <laughs> mel, mel brooks said if you poke a dead frog every day for five years good things will happen it's a voodoo thing <laughs> you're Jewish at four voodoo. and a half years so it's coming up <laughs> so no it was a great book and a lot of the advice was just write create yeah do stand up work hard you know and give it your all and yeah. good things will happen and there, you can't get you can't get more specific than that right because there's so many ways to success because there's, there's so no many, right answer there's no. no right path no there's not one yeah. there's not you know hit, hit up this guy send him a tape he will let you know and then you know you know and then after that you call her and you talk to her sure. for a while and then she gets you on this there's a million of those things and so you you have to kind of pick your battles or you know pick a way that you want to go but all the while you're creating you're a good person you're hitting people up whatever and uh yeah and then and then good things happen so when all those people were moving, I was very excited for them. Yeah. Selfishly, I was like, oh, you know. I, oh, I, I felt that too. Trust right, me. Right, you were I, here I too. I felt it too, yeah. And it, so a little bit was like, oh, I wish I wish, not everybody was leaving right now. Right. Or I wish I were ready to leave so that I could be a part of this and we could all be out there. But for the most part, I was excited. And then it started to get annoying where like everybody was just kind of harping on it. They yep. were kind of depressed. They're yep. like, oh, like this sucks. What's And the, the word exodus kept getting thrown around. And I got sick of that. And around that time, I was at Bumport Theater at their. I was looking f through their costumes. Yeah. For arg for uh, the arguments and grievances show. Okay. The, the debate show. I I was doing a character. I w needed some type of costume, so I went there. I'm looking around and I see this uh, wrestling belt. You know, this championship. <laughs> That's title. how it started, really. Yes. Yes. No shit. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? So <laughs> so I see it. I see it, and it's just a it's just a you know a, a toy belt. And I said, oh, man, it would be funny if I were the Denver comedy champion. And then I thought, oh, that's perfect. I'll make I'll say that yeah. I, I'll say I have this big announcement. Yeah. And everybody will think that it's that I'm moving to L.A., but I'm going to give myself this fucking toy <laughs> belt. <laughs> and it was uh, it was great. It was exactly what I wanted, which was a bunch of comics knew something was up. Yeah. I said I had this big announcement at uh, that I was going to say announce at Three Kings during my open mic. Yeah. And so, you know, a good amount of comics show up or whatever, and, and they're curious. And then <laughs> I, you know, I, I acted like I got a letter in the mail from a group because the, the wrestling title sa has, says ECW yes. on it. And so I made up a letter, wrote a letter from the Ensemble of Comedic Writers, the ECW, <laughs> and I said that I got this in the mail. And it basically, you know, the letter said that, uh, you know, they, they, this – this ensemble was aware that uh, the Colorado, the Denver comedy scene was in a state of flux. You know, a lot of people were uh, were, were moving there, <laughs> moving here, but a lot of other, you know, established comics were leaving. And so in that time of uncertainty or whatever, they felt like it made sense to to crown a champion of the scene you know somebody that was gonna you basically you know, wrote your own and... Denver State of the Union address or like, like <laughs> right. State of the Industry, State of Denver's Industry address. Right. Uh, I did, and I <laughs> and I and I unveiled this title. It says Denver Comedy on it, you know, a bunch of times. Yeah, um, yeah, and I. <laughs> and that belt's gone in and out of your hands a few times. I've lost it. Yeah, I've lost it once, t twice, kind of, uh, because uh, yeah, Mara Wiles 
took it from me. She didn't actually win it, but she was, you know, she was the. She ch- kicked you in the balls. She was technically. Yeah, you were on the ground. I, she, I, I yeah. was there for that for, for that brawl. Yeah, that was the la- at the last too much fun. She and Kevin beat me up. She took the title, uh, you know, as an act of uh, disrespect, you know, and and arrogance. No respect. And uh, and then yeah, and and but and Sam Talent, uh, Sam Talent beat me for the title. Uh, last year before he moved, and then I got it back from him. I won it. Now, back what's from involved him. in beating you for the title? Do they have to like? Is it jokes, or do they? Or are you in, literally in a wrestling match? We've done. It's been a wrestling match all but one time. Wow! I felt like that was fun because like, I, I, I like wrestling matches. Right. As I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it, I didn't know, <laughs> and I just, <laughs> I just thought it would be fun to have this title. And then I thought because again, this was around a time when a lot of people were moving. Yeah. I thought, oh man, what if I beat these people that are moving in a loser leaves town wrestling match? Yep. And then they have to leave town. Yep. They have to move. And so that cracked me up. What a genius way to keep that belt. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. When I also thought, what that, I mean, come on, that's a fun way to say goodbye to the Denver sure. comedy scene is to get beat up by me in the a Denver loser leaves champion. town. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was, that was great. Cause like, uh, the first uh, first time was Chris Sharpentier. Yep. And so we wrestled at Too Much Fun, and I beat him, and yep. then he had to move. And then same thing happened with Which Jordan. we were all happy about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we kicked him out. Get out of here. Good you riddance to bad fucking rubbish. Fucking mustache-wearing head of hair. Uh. <laughs> right. So, yeah, that was the first time, and it was it was perfect. It was just what I wanted. Chris thought it was a lot of fun. So then we did it again. I did it again with Jordan Dahl. Yeah. Why not? You know, yeah. and and that was a lot of fun too. He wore that ridiculous, you know, that wrestling singlet. Yeah. The black and white stripes. <laughs> he looked like he was out of the thirties, you know, <laughs> out of a silent film. Uh, Buster but, Keaton, then. <laughs> yeah. He 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 had his, you know he had a few great ideas for for our match. And yeah. So it's been a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, I mean. It's been like this weird, fun tradition. I've wrestled a couple of uh, matches that weren't Loser Leaves Town matches, but like I, I wrestled Mitch Jones for the yeah. title at Too Much Fun. I, and I Boy, beat, Mitch beat Jones is a up. large fellow. He is. He's it like, was fun to it was. He's fun like to climb little Andre the Giant. He is a really big guy. Maybe, he's like Andre the big guy. He's not really. Yeah. He's not really a giant, but he's fucking huge. Andre the holy shit, that guy's fucking big. <laughs> holy shit, that guy's normal. <laughs> yeah, he. Yeah, he's got the biggest hands I think I've Dude, ever. Dude, they're fucking gigantic. Yeah, so I usually will. Uh, I love shaking his hand. Yeah, I'll shake his hand. I'll usually put my hand up and take a look at it. You know, look at his compare and contrast. Be like, oh yeah, we're both men apparently, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> But yeah, he's. Uh, I would want yeah, to be on huge. your side back in the 1800s. That's what I would. Uh, yeah, get, <laughs> right? by, get behind him. Let's go get some land. <laughs> See if we can't rustle up some goats. Yeah, it, yeah. He would have just taken what he wanted. <laughs> so yeah, and yeah, it was it was a ton of fun to be yeah. able to. to at any time I've I've done this, it's been fun because you can't take it seriously, right? right. I, I I hoped I worried a little bit that people would think I was trying to pat myself on the back in any way. And that yeah. wasn't the case. Uh, and so I, th- I think that that's, tr- I think everybody gets it, you know? And, uh, you know, it, not just anybody I think could have tried to do it. I, I felt like I had garnered a lot of goodwill. I had a good reputation in Denver. Yep. So it wasn't going to be seen as this weird. Who the fuck is this guy? Kind of yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like if somebody who was brand new would have tried it, it would have felt weird. He, I was still worried, but it, you know, people understood what I was doing. I think right away. I I hope so. And if people don't, then they don't. But it's you know, it's an inside joke for the people that get it. And right. It, it really was out of just this. You know, how can I, how can I, you know, stop people from being so upset that these comics are pursuing their dreams? Right. You you should, you know, be here for a certain amount of time. I mean, if if your goal is to try to take the next step. Then, then do it from here. Right, right. Like, stay here, get as good as you can, get comfortable on stage, uh, meet people from all over the country. Well, that's that what's are great about through. here is exactly that. There's so yeah. much good stage time, and at right. the Comedy Works, she, she puts you, Wendy puts you with all, with, like the opportunity to get with all these people is mm-hmm. is is way better than any club in the country. Yeah. Um. You know, outside of the two, you know, L.A. New Yorks, there's mm-hmm. it's yeah. just weekends, and if you're only working a weekend, then you meet one person. And then you're fucking off for six, eight, ten weeks. Mm-hmm. Or if it's like me at the improv, 12 months. 
<laughs> I get one booking a year there. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Which I'm fine with. It, it it is what it is. I work a shitload at Comedy Works. Right. And I, you know, that is my home, and I I uh, am very happy for that. But it's good to have both, you know, both options out there: sure. improv and Comedy Works. I guess. Uh, yeah, you want to be able to get, like you're saying, the that good stage time. The club, getting used to working in a club. Yeah. You know, if that's the That's a big one, too. Yeah, Yeah, it's different. Doing six shows in a row, very different. You know, doing two shows in a night is very different. It's yeah, it can it can mess you up a little bit. Yeah. Three shows is really weird. <sighs> I, I three have is rarely done three, but yeah. it is weird. It it can throw you off because <laughs> by that third set, the last time I had to do it was uh in Portland. I was at Helium yeah. opening for Kyle Kinane. Yeah. And they added a five o'clock Saturday. Show. See, I would almost rather have a midnight show than a I, five o'clock. Right. Really, you I, think? I get you. I understand that. But you like the earlier but I, show? It was good. Yeah. I think because if if the pe- if the crowd is going to see somebody that they like, it's fine. It's it's better better sure. that it's early because it's not a bunch of random people getting. It's drunk people that really want to see show. Kyle. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it didn't matter that it was early. They were still uh, excited. They weren't acting weird, so we didn't act weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, I could see it being bad if it were, like, always the case. Sure. And so you've got this 5 o'clock that sometimes it's full, sometimes there's 30 sometimes people. Brutal. Yeah. And they're all 70, so yeah. they, they, want, they, they ate at 3.30, show at 5, you know, in bed by, by 8. By 8, yeah. Yeah, you don't, want, <laughs> you don't want that, but that wasn't the case. <laughs> but by that third set, even in the second set, but especially the third set, I'm in my head half of the time, like, did I do this fucking joke already? Right. And it's like, no, that that's was the last hard. Set. Yeah, it's it, tough. I've gotten to the point now where if I'm doing one or like if I'm doing two shows a night uh, or more, uh, I typically or if I'm doing like five shows in a weekend, I'll typically stay stick with a set mm-hmm. and just go with that yeah. because I have these little riffs that I'll say every now and then. And I'm like, fuck, did I already say that? Yeah, that would be it would feel so shitty fuck. and weird if you, and, and they're not real jokes accidentally. You know, yeah, especially something that's supposed to be like this riff, right? A planned riff, (laughs) right? Right, (laughs) yeah. You're like, that's not written on here, I just know to throw it in there whenever it needs to be thrown in there, and it it doesn't work like that. You have to be careful with that, so yeah, that 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 kind of thing, uh, that you can get better in a club, and that's a good idea, and uh, so yeah, you stay here until you feel like you know, like maybe you should take that next step, yeah, and. I'm surprised that some of the people have moved from here when they have because it seems like early they yeah it's yeah, been I, early I where it's that. like why not stay here yeah. you're not having a good time yeah. like yeah it's not know. it's not the best here you don't love it the most right yeah and, it's and my thing with not wanting to move too is I feel like you can get so much more accomplished here uh, you can build yourself up so much better and I feel like if you don't have certain accolades here you shouldn't leave mm-hmm. you know what I mean like if you like. Uh, when you go to these other places, if you're not locked into your set and to who you're into, what your voice is, you know, like your, your comedic mm-hmm. voice on stage, that's going to get warped. And then you're just still growing and still trying to figure, which of course you're always going to grow, but it, you get confused because then you start straying away from who you thought you were. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, for, for me, uh, I didn't want to move until I was like, okay, like I, I know what I'm doing now like i know who i am on stage i know what i can say what i can't say i know how to uh you know skirt around certain types of jokes uh and i feel like that would get lost when you lose when you leave too early yeah i i would i would assume that too and uh or you would uh you'd be more likely to be influenced by the scene that you're in that you move to you mean Yeah. yeah yeah right and that's not you don't really want that right uh so yeah i mean and everybody's different so there's the argument that you and i could have left earlier and now and we didn't right and it's like we should have i don't know but i don't i don't look at it like that i don't either because we're still you're always growing right you don't hit a point where you're done where you're just especially in this career no that's what i'm saying in this career well yeah you're you're never supposed even in life you're not supposed to stop growing but unless you're a woman (laughs) just kidding come on ladies we're sexist here in denver remember Uh don't forget (laughs) sorry we (laughs) we, i I have no issue starting fights on this podcast because nobody's listening Uh, Ah, that's true we only have 13 listens on the first episode so it's brand new watch by the time that this one releases we're getting like thousands i'm like oh fuck god damn it now now i gotta edit this out bring it on (laughs) no there uh 
there's an argument that you know when you're ready you're ready and it's good to go and just do it i get that too you know but i wasn't i didn't feel like i was ready until yeah. more recently i also was uh I didn't feel like bored here or stagnant. Yeah. Because there's a lot you can do. Oh yeah. And now we were talking about uh Steven headlining the comedy works. That's kind of the kind of the next step. It's for you. one of the only things that's left that yeah. I really want yeah. here. And so I'm hope yeah, I'm hoping that I can do that. And then after that it would kind of feel to me like, you know, I can keep being happy here, but I'm starting to feel that itch of yeah. like, what else can I do? Right. And especially when you see uh, our peers having success. TV sets, Sharp. JFL, yeah, you know, Sharp, a yes. show. Sharpie on Kimmel. Right. Yeah, the, those, who get that, those who can't, guys, the Walker guys. had the uh, the Snapchat show. I right. Mean, he's, those it, are it's all, it's yeah, all those things that you're like, well, these are my friends. We all kind of started together. I, I want, and that was a big thing too, is I didn't generate the heat that I wanted to generate from Denver like they did. Yeah. And so they're like, okay, cool. Let's just put myself there. I've done everything I can do here. Yeah. And I think that's when it's a good time to go, uh, yeah. <clears throat> which not a lot of people do, but it is what it is. Right. No, everybody's different. And I understand the, the, uh, the desire to, uh, get out there yeah. to try and, and so it's all, it's almost like two different ways to attack it. If you go out and hit the road and you try to make relationships, friendships that way, that's a good idea. But I also think it's good, even if you do that, it's good to have a home base, yeah. a club that, that you're getting, that you're advancing in, yeah. or a scene that that you can come home to that feels supportive. Because otherwise, if you're just out, you're a fucking drifter. How do drifter. you clear your head? Right. You're a drifter, yeah. and nobody is really... It's brutal. I mean, you're, every, every person that you're meeting is a new face as right. opposed to an old friend, and that can feel weird. Right. Because you're constantly making first impressions instead of just being yourself or right. allowing yourself to be a little reserved or whatever you feel you can't you, you the you pressure like you is way harder that yeah there's a lot of the pressure pressure's way harder yeah so that's tough if you're if you're just starting out or whatever and so but i i get that idea if you're out, if you're out there doing shows and and learning then mm -hmm. that's good too i understand that but it is tough yeah so I've uh, I feel like I've benefited from being here, and we're lucky to be in Denver too. Here. Yeah, because like Boise or fucking you know Wichita, those scenes you can't really grow in. You have right. to, you, yeah. which coming back home you don't have a, ho a home. So mm -hmm. I mean, we are super lucky, you know, being here in Denver to call so. Denver our home yeah. uh, because our scene is so big. I mean, there's three major clubs in this, like within. 30 minutes of each other right that are all seem to have their own little niche of a crowd mm -hmm. you know and uh, a lot of our indie shows are doing very well uh sure, you know yeah. like there's a lot of independently run shows here uh that you know like ben bryant is doing he's putting a lot of work into stuff and mm -hmm. and i like seeing that you know that's uh that's i think kind of what makes it when you come home it, it kind of helps ground you because like there's so many shows here and there's so mm -hmm. many sets to to do so yeah, you have to be careful with that too. That's almost a trap I think you can fall into. Is if you focus too much on producing a show, you're not focusing on your set, on your stage presence, on your jokes. And right. so that, right. even if you're running this great show, you might get too caught up in you know booking and promoting, and you're not focusing on your own act as much. And so that's bad too. I mean, you basically you know you just have to balance a lot of uh a lot of different things and it's tough and that's why not everybody can do it yeah and it's why people stop yeah. you know it's it's hard it's not rewarding all the time not every set gives you what you want you know or, or allows you to grow a little bit you have to you have to be conscious of of what you can learn when you can or whatever right. and while also putting your head down and just grinding you know <laughs> well because that so because if you if you it. get focused on well they're getting this i'm not getting this and that whole whole mentality yeah. uh, you, you are right it's or that book was right you just have to put your head down do what you feel is right because at the, the end of the day if you're not going to bed satisfied with what you did then you're kind you kind of wasted your day yeah. be it you're famous or not you've achieved your goal if you didn't do the things that you felt like would get you towards that goal then then i feel like it would be like a wasted day but that's just mm -hmm. me i definitely wasted a lot of uh, a lot of nights drinking too much you yeah know? where it, as long as i went to an open mic or two i thought that i was doing a good thing yeah. and then after a while it was like well that doesn't it doesn't really help 
to be seen shit faced at an open right. mic and have to have like an okay set where a couple times you accidentally were funny. Yeah. Like that's not a win. Well, that's and then a it fucking pigeonholes you down to where you yeah. feel like you ha- <clears throat> you have to drink to be funny. Sure, yeah. Or or you it's know? it's a lot easier to to drink when than not to drink when you're at an open mic in one of seven bars. Right. 6 nights a week, whatever. Yeah, it's uh it's tough. Uh, especially at first because you're so insecure you're nervous oh yeah and And a lot of times you're young you're 22 23 years old you don't know how to handle alcohol you don't know how to handle yourself you don't know how to handle doing comedy right and but you're excited you're happy to be out you're meeting these new friends yeah you're figuring out how to be funny on stage it's very exciting and i loved the squire and getting you know getting hammered and (laughs) having a blast yeah meeting you know meeting these people that are going to be your closest friends right all of that, you know, lends itself to drinking and partying, but again, there, there's you have to try to strike a balance where you're still uh, striving forward. Yeah, where you're still, yeah, where you're where you're going to an open mic to work on a couple of jokes, right? And then you do them, and then you, you know, tweak them from right. there. And and if you're not doing that, if you're just hanging out, waiting to go up, drinking, and then afterwards, you know, you're trying to figure out, you know, who has weed so you can smoke their <laughs> weed, yeah. then you're not. You're not. I mean, you're just. You're not helping yourself. You're just hanging out. Yeah, at that and, point, right? Which is fine. Now and then, but be true to yourself. You do you want, just want to hang out, yeah. or do you want to do comedy? Yeah. And what level do you really want to get to? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You want to. You want to start figuring that stuff out earlier. Yeah. I think if you can. Yeah. You know, don't just enjoy it. You know, because it is fun, but don't get, you know, don't get caught up in it in the party aspect to where in the social aspect. And then let the stand up suffer because if you're new, then I mean that's crucial. You know, you can't coast as much if you're brand new. And uh, you try, but <laughs> if we, right. we you want to really bad. We know immediately uh, if, a lot of if people, you're doing that or not. Right, and when a lot of people saw Sam Talent, uh, and and he made it look easy. You know, he he's pretty. Sam is a horrible influence. Right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, not... like I love Sam to death, but he's just I because I fell into that too. I was just like, well, right. I want to do that. Yeah, and I and I, I, I don't think anyone like t- t- ten people probably in this country can do what Sam Talent does. Right. It's really, yeah. He what it is is he's so good that he makes stand up look easy. Right. Even though what he's doing is very hard. Oh yeah. So yeah, because it it's all <laughs> for those of you who don't know Sam, it's <clears throat> it's a lot of crowd work, uh, is what he does. But it's this very off. It seems. Very off the cuff. Yeah. His whole set seems very riffy, very mm-hmm. like in the moment. And for the most part, I mean, like I, you probably know this better than I do. I would say half of that is improv, mm-hmm. if that. I, mean, I feel like yeah. most of it's probably like he probably has a good idea of what he wants to do yeah. throughout his set, but it just mm-hmm. seems so so riff like. Uh, I could be wrong though, because when he does this show, uh, Info Formation Live, yeah. He puts in zero, <laughs> zero prep work. Yeah, and he, he and he can steal the show. Sure. Yeah, it's. I think it's mostly that he's so comfortable on stage that if he is doing a joke or riffing, it sounds like he is, you know, in control the whole right. time. Right. So it doesn't feel wildly different when he goes between the two, and that is what you want. Is like this conversation. I just read a quote about Patrice O'Neill and how Love him. how he was one of the best because it felt like a conversation, like a one-way oh, yeah. conversation oh, yeah. the whole time where he was just kind of talking, and if he went from uh, from riffing into a bit and then back to You could barely tell. Right, right. It was very seamless, and Sam is like that, and it makes it look like you just have to go up there and talk at, off the top of your head and be in the moment. <laughs> And it'll come, and that's not. And how, you see these new talent comics try that, and it we just did, fall yeah. flat. Yeah, yeah. There was a few years ago where it where it seemed like everybody you couldn't help but be influenced by yeah. him, right? Everybody looked up to him to a certain degree, and and wanted to be as funny as him, uh, but they didn't realize how much work had gone into. You have to put in a lot of work before oh, yeah. you can have that skill so effortless right yeah right because it is a skill it took a lot for him to get there yeah he did a ton of improv before uh while he was starting to do stand-up. before because he was doing improv yeah. first right i think so but i also think that he started doing improv like right it must have been right time. around the same yeah. time yeah i think yeah because he wasn't trying to just do improv he was trying to do comedy as he a just whole. wanted to get in front of people yeah yeah and i think oh yeah he, he realized that improv was a good uh, just a good muscle to build up or whatever right. 
and uh yeah and then and he i think he used to uh rely on that riffing in the moment stuff a lot more and in the last couple of years his jokes have gotten a lot better and so he does it less all right well let's dive into these stories because we are already 32 minutes into this recording (laughs) nice (laughs) Uh, But uh, we're going to start off at the top uh, at the top of our country uh, in the uh, northwest there over in Portland, Oregon, in Portland, which is normally known as a very open minded uh, place. I feel like it has been. Yeah, but it seems like it seems. Yeah, it was and is. But uh, it seems like recently there's been um, this realization that there's there's a lot of shitty uh, angry people there. right there's shitty a lot of, people there a lot of angry people that are that are holed up you know in and around the cities and they're descending into some of these cities including portland and yeah, yeah. getting it's getting a little ugly it is it, it is and and some of those those people are like this guy of our first story uh frederick nolan sorrell which i love when they start putting in three names because then <laughs> then like then you know that the media hates him because yeah. they're like they're hoping that he does something fucked up because yeah it's a yeah it's a bad three thing. names <laughs> bad thing to, to have the middle name included <laughs> right <laughs> oh this guy oh you know he fucked up if they put right. his middle name in there <laughs> he must have tried to assassinate a celebrity or a politician <laughs> yeah it's always bad <laughs> so 49 year old uh sorrell has been arrested uh and is being charged with a hate crime after following a black muslim couple for 20 blocks yelling uh, very, very racist uh, slurs and uh, verbiage uh, at them. Uh, and then when he gets arrested and he gets interviewed, best part of the whole the whole story <laughs> here is he starts bawling his eyes out. Yeah. Uh, uh, saying, I, I didn't know. I was just trying to, I was just trying, I was just scared from fear. In fact, this is what he sounds like. Them. I was just going to work. I never tried to follow them. <laughs> I never tried to make contact with them after the fact. It looks like he's trying so hard to have to, to like to get those tears out. Like it, it, it looks. Mm. He's like, oh, come on, push it harder, push it harder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so apparently, he followed these people for twenty, 20 blocks. blocks. Yeah, he just happened to be going the same direction as these two, <laughs> who were walking, and they were blocks. going at the same speed. He was in the car. He right? was in the car, and they were walking. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So he he's was like, just trying to go to work. <laughs> driving 10 miles an hour for 20 blocks he was in a school zone so he figured well i have to go slow i might as well yell this stuff yeah what a piece of shit and i don't yeah i don't know if he i don't know if he was forcing the tears or if he's such a sensitive if he has no idea you know what's going on inside of himself that once he was once you know people told him that he was a bad person he didn't know (laughs) you know and so he's crying because he's like learning a whole lot of stuff that he should have known already. <laughs> oh shit! I can't do that all at once. <laughs> well, yeah. I just I feel like he is uh, like a lot of white guys. You know, it just seems like it's mostly white dudes who think that they know a lot. Mm-hmm. And one of the things they think they know is that uh, you know Muslims are dangerous right. and they hate Christians and all of this bullshit. You know that has been you know force fed idiots from conservative media mostly. And so he's just so ignorant. And then when people he's kind of making him, Muslims hate Christians, I, right. I feel like oh, he's yeah. part of the problem. Why? There. W- yeah. Why wouldn't you hate some, <laughs> some douchebag that's doing that? Yeah. Some idiot egg. that yells out his car. Who yells, "Take off your fucking burqa! This is America. Go back to your fucking country." That is a quote from this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And then he didn't know. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah. know. I, I, well, I thought, <laughs> I thought that we were going to the same store, and I, I asked if they needed a ride. No, yeah, they're so. Uh, <laughs> they call me White Devil. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're so influenced by what the news tells them, and so then they have, you know, he, he mentions how it was a fear-based. Oh yeah, we got that right here. We got that right here. It I'll was fear-based. No, he just, I, I this yelled out i don't go on social media looking to hate on people i guess i'm just a, a patriot i guess <laughs> i'm just a patriot <laughs> oh fuck that guy i missed that part of here yeah what i guess i'm just a patriot i guess i just love this country too much that's not what's going on here 
<laughs> you're a moron. You're racist. <laughs> yes, you're closed I'm just minded. a patriot. How did I miss that? Yeah. Why did they why That's did they awesome. dim that audio down right there? That <laughs> It was the end of it, yeah. That, they, God damn it, that pisses me off. But yeah, he said something about how it was fear based. It's like, well, yeah, your fear is rooted in ignorance and then, you know, informed, misinformed by, you know, propaganda that makes that fear turn into like hatred, you know, but it's right. all based in ignorance. If, you know, if you meet enough Muslim people or if you read about Muslim culture, it's the same as Christian culture where they're some, both crazy. Right. They're both over the top. Some, Christians right. are even probably more over the top. I was going to say there's there's parts of both books that are more uh, violent or antagonistic than other parts. Other yeah. parts are very peaceful. Yeah. And because it was written over years and years by different people or whatever, then uh, you've got these different ideologies that don't really make sense together. Right. I mean, and that's that's uh, the different writers is the the Bible is. I don't know how many people wrote the Quran, but uh, I would venture to say it's kind of like the Bible. I like from whatever. Yeah. Granted, I have very limited knowledge on this, so I, I'm not one to speak too heavily on it. But from what I understand, I feel like a lot of people, uh, you know, wrote that. It, it, it's it's almost like a farmer's almanac. People yeah. just kind of. It's like their version of Wikipedia, like you right, know. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like, like at least the Bible is to me. The Bible it's like is. that's what you. Well, what do we do here? Well, let's check, you know, Wiki Bible and see. What yeah, there's, 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 there's conflicting ideologies or pass passages, and some groups have focused on certain parts of the 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 Bible or the Quran, and other groups have focused on other parts. So it's it's bigger than just Muslims hate Christians or right. Muslims. You know, you can't say Muslims. And just talk about all Muslims right. over, you know, it's like three billion people, you know, it's a, over a billion people. <laughs> Muslims hate America. Muslims hate freedom. You know, like that's it's too many people to just use that blanket statement. Right. And it is the same thing with Christians. There's a lot of wacko extremist Christians. But who, there's also a lot of normal ones. Right. There's and a lot, there's of, a normal lot of normal Muslims. Exactly. There's a yes. shitload of normal Muslims. And most, I would say most Muslims don't drive around yelling at Christians. <laughs> You know, so there's, you know, yeah. that's the difference. And <laughs> this fucking guy is giving Americans, white guys, Christians, whatever, giving these patriots. He's giving patriots a bad I guess name. I'm just a patriot. Yeah, no, you're a no. douchebag. Patriots are fucking informed and realize, you know, that you can love your country while acknowledging that there's a lot of things wrong with it. Right. You know, it, uh, there's so much nuance that is missed with these fucking people because there's no time. We don't have time to be nuanced. Right. We don't have time. To listen to somebody try to qualify a statement, you know, or be uh, sensitive when they're while trying to have discourse, you know, we don't have time for that. We have people yelling shit out of cars. We have people saying, "Go back to your own country," which is, you know, we used to. We the used only to time that people. I, I find myself saying this though, uh, not go back to your country, but go back to whatever state you moved here from. Yeah, well, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I feel like, like, like that's the diet racism of, of Colorado. Yeah, is just like ah, go back to California, you fucking putts, you yuppie. Right, people. Yeah, <laughs> people don't. People don't want a lot of other people moving where they live, and it makes sense for people to move here because it's a great place. Right. So. It seems like more people should real, you know, most people moved here from somewhere else. So you have to you you have to acknowledge that, you know, people are going to move here. And I think it's weird when there's a hatred for anybody who moved here, you know, because not not everybody that moved here is blowing it, you know, is right. is causing car accidents or getting too high and calling you know, the calling the paramedics. Yeah. <laughs> That's calling my favorite. Calling 911. I'm dying. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of that, but <laughs> apparently at Comedy Works, if someone if they have to call uh, uh, EMTs or whatever, uh, m managers told me this. The very first question that EMTs have asked every single time is, "Have you eaten or smoked marijuana today?" Yeah, that is the very first question they ask. That's how bad it's become here in yeah. Colorado. Is that these out of towners are like it's not kicking in? And I get it. I ate a 200 <laughs> milligram edible, and I it didn't kick in for two and a half hours, and I forgot that I had eaten it. Until I'm driving to the club and I'm like, God, why am I so high right now? Wow. And I'm like, I'm not smoking a joint. I didn't do a dab. And then I'm like, all right, whatever. And my mouth got real dry. I'm like, what the fuck happened to me? And I was like, oh, yeah. I ate a 200 milligram edible. And then I blacked out right after that. <laughs> why did it take so long? I, don't, I, I think because I was just ignoring it. 
Mm, you know, like okay. it's if you eat acid and you ignore, and then you got to start going to do shit, and then you're, and then all of a sudden you're like, God, what is wrong? Oh, right, I'm tripping. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you can ignore acid. I feel like for a little bit until it starts speaking, and then you're like, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm, I know, what I'm, you're I'm tripping hard. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's funny. You, uh, we went out and ate after that, right? Yeah, I didn't know you were black. Yeah, <laughs> that was way high. I gorged myself on food. I woke up full the next day, which is never a good thing to wake up. No, <laughs> full. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh so so this guy said just to kind of wrap up this thought he says all i know is fear-based information uh so he, he's claiming that his lack of education is the reason for him being a douchebag to other you know human beings uh and he said i would love to sit down and had and have an open conversation with them uh i'm sorry i would love to sit down and have an open conversation with them and have an open mind and apologize yeah, I'll bet he would. It's I'm like, sure. Yeah, these people, they don't, they don't want, they don't, they want, don't want that. They don't want to watch, yeah, to watch you blubber about how you're a fucking patriot, you know? Like, uh, and, and to pass the buck, too, where it's like, oh, I'm sorry. It's because I'm a patriot and I ha- I got fear based information. And so you're still passing the buck onto the media or yeah. whatever. It's like, you're an adult. You should be able to seek out correct information you should be informed based on unbiased right. news and all of that is is easy to do if you just like i said slow down <laughs> take a couple deep breaths have some water a lot of people <laughs> don't drink water enough so their brains are you know not functioning just when slurm. they're doing this shit they just drink slurm, they drink slurm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they drink nothing but slurm and it gums up the works and yeah so yeah don't just be better just stop yelling at people. Don't feel like you have to have this. I'm guessing he would want it to be, you know, filmed yeah. so that he could be shown being sympathetic. It's yeah. like, it's too late. You fucking blew it, you know, so go do your community service and either never. And ta- learn from this. Yeah. Either never talk to a Muslim person again because you're so stupid or educate yourself and then be, you know, more of a human yeah. when you interact with people. Yeah. Either way. Or you could just. You know, just fucking go live in the mountains and don't ever be, talk to anybody again. Just be racist to yourself. And, to the and other stay offline. Yeah. You know, he was talking well, about he got banned he... on, uh, <laughs> from Facebook. The judge uh, made him, legally took him off of Facebook. Oh, because he was shitty on Facebook uh-huh. already, right? Yeah. He, and he was and going he... on to Facebook to yep. shit on. To sh- He's like, I don't do it on purpose. I just can't help myself. Yeah. Ah, uh, fuck you. I don't do it on purpose. I can't help. Fuck. Y- yeah. yeah. Yes, you do. I have an addiction. I'm powerless over my addiction <laughs> to being a fucking racist. <laughs> Racist dickhead. Yeah, that's such a weird, it's such a weird concept. Weird move. Yeah. yeah, there's not as much. Even as he's apologizing, he's not be helping he's not himself really, yeah, accountable. He's really not, yeah, he's like, it's not my fault. It's 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 this fake news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck that guy. Oh man. Uh, I feel like part you know part of the problem in Oregon and here is that when you legalize weed, you have you know you have some idiots that. I don't know if he cares about they weed le- or not, but you know, he looks you, like he cares about meth. If you look draws- at his picture, <laughs> meth it, and Jack Daniels. It brings a bunch of people together that maybe aren't gonna, you know, be able to get along. Yeah, just because you both smoke weed doesn't mean you're gonna get along. And I think that, that that's part of the problem in Oregon. It's part of the problem here. Yeah, when people get angry, it's because you know there's all these people that are. Uh, smoking the wrong strains smoking weed yeah these sativa heads are really <laughs> fucking it up for us cool indica guys and we just want to chill out on the couch you know yeah and then these sativa people want to have Yell a and panic hate attack <laughs> while they yeah while they drive while they drive behind a muslim couple <laughs> oh man uh all right well let's uh let's move down to florida we got two stories from florida this week yeah. uh we're gonna start with the uh a uh am i saying that right mayoral yeah mayoral mayoral no it's mayoral uh a (laughs) floor may (laughs) it's my fear it's my fear of mayors that that keeps me from pronouncing this word right uh a a florida mayoral candidate uh says to black activists uh calling for reparations to quote go back to africa yep this fucker is running for the mayor, mayor of Florida, St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg, Florida. Yep, St. Petersburg, Florida. Mayor of Florida, Florida you idiot. <laughs> no, and St. Petersburg is a you know it's it's not it's a like big, a tiny it's a big spot. right. It's there's pe- a lot of people. A lot of there. news comes from from out of there too. They're in Tampa. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, <laughs> in Fort Lauderdale. I don't understand. I guess it's because it's uh, 
it, it's a tr- you know it's it's just beautiful so all kinds of people go there yep and it includes crazy dumb people because <laughs> uh, yeah we t- so many live shows we've had the f- stories from florida are crazy unbelievably yeah. crazy Just unbelievably all crazy. over the the spectrum yeah from drugs violence sex. prostitutes yeah. throwing throwing alligators into wendy's <laughs> fucking drive through windows remember that right. one yeah yeah oh man a lot a lot of uh <laughs> excitement in florida but yeah this fucker this dude so his name is for mayor paul con con gimme is is what we're gonna call him con jimmy okay. uh he's a white 60 year old republican perfect uh-huh. my, fa- my favorite people <laughs> White 60-year-old Republican. Oh, yeah. They're always so loving and open-minded. <laughs> so he uh, – basically what he was doing, that they were in a, a debate for mayor, uh, and um, they he specifically was responding to another candidate uh, whose name was Jesse Neville, uh, who was yeah. another white dude. Uh, but he, he he's a young dude. He grew up in Miami. He's yeah. always been in Florida. Uh, and he has prioritized reparations as, uh, as a key – platform in his campaign yeah so this this paul con jimmy guy uh <laughs> hmm. is just reaming him in this public debate now yeah now paul is already considered a long shot and i think now he's kind of making it a little a little further there uh or he's <laughs> taking the trump approach to, to this one just say outlandish shit then back your way down yeah trying to nag <laughs> but he says quote uh the the reparations you talk about Mr. Neville, your people already got your your reparations. Your per- <laughs> and this is hard to say. <laughs> and I quote, "Your reparations came in the form of a man named Barack Obama." Yeah. He said this 2017 and he said this in public. Yep. While running for mayor, not not as the mayor, you're al- you're already the mayor, or, or he failed getting mayor. He's, <laughs> right, he's still yeah. trying to be mayor, and he's. I'm not going to be the mayor, but I do want to try to get a position on Fox News, some type of you know, as some type of <laughs> Fox commentator, and at least. <laughs> you know, yeah, a contributor, racist contributor to Fox News. So, oh God, yeah, he's but no, he is trying to ha- make people vote for him right to now, represent them, <laughs> and that's what he said. Yeah, to this dude, this young. Uh, Neville, he's a Jewish guy. Yep. Uh, I read that he, gr- growing up, he saw how fucked, fucked up it was. Yeah. yeah how fucked uh, poor people were, how they were mistreated, how they were forgotten. Yeah. So then, yeah, he tries to, he lined himself with the Uhuri uh, uh, movement. Yeah, I, think. I don't know how to p- pronounce that, but yes, he, he, he lined themselves with that movement. It's a, Uhuru Solidarity Movement, yeah. Which advocates for the reparations a- a- yeah. as well as paths towards alleviating ways to social heal. inequality. Yes, right. ways to heal uh, the relationships between government and poor people, poor people yeah. black people especially. The go back to Africa is so <laughs> fucked because they were brought here by, by us, white people. By- <laughs> They were brought here to be slaves by white people. You can't then say, if you don't like it here, go back. You go didn't, back you didn't to choose the country. to come here. What the fuck? Yeah, why don't you get on that return flight? <laughs> you should have booked You should have booked both ways. You should have booked your round of, trip. <laughs> yes, you would have saved some money if you would have bought both plane tickets. What the fuck? And, and, and he digs himself into, into e- an even further hole, too, is because he doesn't back down. No. Like he'll, so Because so he's, he's a straight shooter. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that's what uh, racist. That's what that's what Republicans like are, is yeah. a straight shooter. <laughs> I don't mince words. He says, "Quote my advice to you: If you don't like it here in America, planes leave every hour from Tampa Airport. Go back to Africa. Go back to Africa. Go back." <laughs> What the fuck? Oh yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see him crying on the news. <laughs> I want to see him crying. He, well, then he, he says, too, nothing against African-Americans who are doing their best here in America. Oh, of course Fuck not. Fuck off. Yeah. What? <laughs> nothing against African-Americans that are trying to get the jobs that I want them to get. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> as long as they don't complain about the quality of jobs that are available. That we, that, that I, that specifically me and my, and my constituents are like, all right, y'all no, can have yeah, these. Nothing against African-Americans that uh, just put their head down, take a <laughs> shitty job, and then struggle financially and socially for the rest of their lives. Nothing, nothing against, against them. them. They can stay. Yes. Because they're not causing problems. They're not talking. You know, <laughs> they're, not, <laughs> they're not reading. <laughs> they're not outspoken. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, they just, they just get led 
by uh, by pieces of shit like him. And like you said, he was a he was a long shot candidate anyway. Yes. But I just I hate that anybody like him thinks that they should serve public office. Oh yeah. They think he thinks that he's smart enough, that he knows enough about people oh, and, I know. and how oh, yeah. to lead. Fuck you. Yeah. You haven't led in your life. He's probably given some fucking cushy job where he was a manager somewhere. I can see that. And then he thinks that he's good at talking to people because he's fired a few people. Right. Or, you know, ugh, just whatever he is. He's so what terrible. do you think is worse, this guy or Kid Rock? Because isn't Kid Rock going for like Detroit mayor? He mentioned he was talking about running for Senate and it would be in Michigan because that's where he's from. Uh, he was. Yeah, he grew up outside of Detroit, I think. But uh, you think uninformed Kid Rock yeah. or racist as fuck Paul Kungami. I don't like either of them. Neither of them should feel like they like that, like they're smart enough to run or like, yes, yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. And, and is, I think that's part of the problem is that there's been so many people who were unsuited for public office who ran anyway, who, who won. And then if they, if there's any success, they claim it. And it's like, no, if anything, you were, you know, you stayed out of the way just enough for other people to get work done. Right. Like the worst people are the ones that have these agendas and then they prevent other people from, advancing other agendas sure because a lot of times those agendas are progressive and then the leader you know like michael hancock is you know in the way of denver progressives advancing a progressive social you know gotcha uh, you know a helpful agenda and that's why Kayvon's running yeah Kayvon Kayvon sees how uh, you know how much bullshit there is he's trying to be yeah a no-nonsense kind of hey this is what i want he's a straight shooter but not racist as fuck <laughs> he's a straight shooter but he's not a 60 year old white man you know, who's who yelling for he... people to go back to africa right yeah he's never yelled that to anybody unless <laughs> unless they were on a plane you know heading, heading to, to africa, africa. <laughs> for vacation yeah for a trip then he could say, hey, have a great time when you go back to, to Africa. Africa. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way he, uh, Kayvon would say it. <laughs> but yeah, Kayvon sees, and Kayvon is uh, is the opposite of this Kanjemi guy or whatever. Yeah. Kayvon is like this social activist. He has, you know. Gives back a lot, too. He, he has a lot of, uh, yeah, he has a lot of great uh, ideas, a good head on his shoulders. and right. And he's not in it to try and gain power or influence within this town. He's not trying to make himself rich. You know, a lot, it seems like a lot of people who jump into politics have the money. Yes. And because they have money, they think that they can, you know, do good or advance their agenda, you know, with right. their money. And either way, it's selfish. And with him, I, I feel like it, there's no way that he's being selfish. Right. It's really that he sees how fucked and up. And wants to fix it. Yeah. He, yeah. he wants to fix help fix Denver because he's been here a long time. He wants to continue to be here. And he just thinks he has a good idea of, w of what would work, of, right. of how to get to – a, a place where everybody is, you know, happier with how and the city, city doesn't run. fall apart around because yeah. there is a lot of growth here, and uh, you know that there's not like there needs to be someone that can wrap their head around what that looks mm -hmm. like to help help that grow better. Yeah. Um, well, apparently this con Jimmy guy uh, has been a shithead for his whole life. <laughs> uh, after Obama, he was a Democrat. Obama uh, yeah. got elected, yeah. then he switched parties. That's right. Uh, because he believes uh, he does not. Uh, he switched parties specifically after Obama announced his support for same sex marriage. Uh, right. Then in 2009, uh, he, <laughs> he verbally assaulted a KFC employee after his food took t too long. Yeah. Also, a <laughs> little, little more straight shooting. <laughs> yeah, right. At the KFC. <laughs> then in January of this year, he was charged with a felony elder abuse after his mother yep. was rushed to intensive care unit uh, with bed sores so gaping her bones were visible. Yeah, how about that? How about you try to take care of your own mom before you try to take, take care, care of, of a Florida, whole city? Florida, the fucking oldest state in our country. Yeah, St. Petersburg has. Uh, thousands and thousands of retired of old people, people yeah. yeah who who don't want bed sores <laughs> going down to their bones they want oh my god fuck that's your mother was the mom living with him I, I, he I, must I, have been in he, charge of her he must have been in charge of her so, yeah and so he just yeah. wasn't going over there he was too busy yelling at people at kfc <laughs> i gotta go ignore my mom I, I don't have time to wait for this chicken oh, man. i'm supposed to go <laughs> 
I'm supposed to go over my mom's house for her monthly flip. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, what a piece of shit. And then, he, yeah, he thinks he can tell other people how they should live their lives when he can't even prevent his own mom from, from bed Getting sores that fucked up. Yeah. Down to the bone. Just yeah. open yeah. wounds. This Probably has sheets guy. sticking to... Oh, just God. A, this guy is just a walking gash. Yeah. So, Florida, if you're part of the Info Nation and you live in Florida... Uh, Make sure if you if you see anything new on this guy, please s- send it our way yeah. uh, to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash information. Send me the link uh, because I would love to shit on this guy more because right. fuck I'm a, him. I'm 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 doing like uh, Llewellyn and no old, no country for old men. I'm gonna make him a special project of mine. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make sure him and that poor, that Oregon piece of shit. <laughs> I don't want either of them to experience too much joy or financial success. Or comfort, because oof, they don't. Fuck they them. certainly don't deserve it. No, yeah. they don't. They don't. Uh, well, our last story, uh, still in Florida, and we mentioned this uh, town as well in Fort Lauderdale, Dale, Florida. Oh, I didn't even realize it was both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're both. Oh wait, Fort Fort Lauderdale, St. Petersburg, Petersburg gotcha. Tampa, uh, and gotcha. then. Uh, those are kind of the main ones that we get a lot of shit from. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I was thinking there. we were we were in the same. We were still in St. Petersburg. God, no. I would have loved that. Uh, because I would have loved to hear what this guy had to say on, I on like, this incident. <laughs> I like this story. Uh, so this is still in Florida, and and, and this is a little bit less uh, serious. You know, it's, it's not more a, a, fun. It's yeah. more fun. We, we've been talking <laughs> a lot about race. So we're gonna talk about an idiot here who a man <laughs> <laughs> apparently robbed a Fort Lauderdale bank, uh, then ran naked, uh, throwing money out. Uh, to quote, begin his career as a comedian. <laughs> yeah, we well, yeah, we started the we started this <laughs> podcast talking about how it's tough to be a comic. You don't get you a lot have of it in. You, you don't gotta get gotta a lot of money. <laughs> well, and he he actually is pretty smart because he knew uh, it's tough to make money when you first start out. <laughs> You so, know, so th- that's true. It took about five or five, ten years for me to start making right solid to make money. any yeah, yeah. to to where you you get more paid gigs than free right. The, a good thing that uh, I've heard uh, as far as advice from more than one successful comedian is uh, don't don't say no until you can yeah you know what I mean mm-hmm. like oh yeah there's really there and and I think that's a pretty good thing to keep in mind is that. You again. You're not owed anything. Sure. You don't deserve oh, anything yeah. right away, and uh, so you, and you don't deserve to be paid right away. Yeah. You deserve to be uh, given opportunities to go on stage, to be set up for success. Sure. You know, by the host or by the booker or whatever. Um, but you you you're not owed pay. No. Until you're funny enough to command it or whatever. Right. right. So yeah, at first it's really tough because I've said that you have to go one of two ways. Um, and really, you and, and Troy and Stephen A.J. went one way, Matt Monroe. Mm-hmm. Me and Sam went the other way, which is you have to either have a job that pays you so, yep. that, so that you're free to eat it on the comedy side. Yep, yep. Or you you have to just do comedy and try to get paid wh- however you can via comedy and just – you have to scale everything your expenses way down way down you it, have to you have to it's a lifestyle change it is yeah, yes you have absolutely to, you have to pick one of the two i think because there's not a good third option right you know uh, it's it would be tough to have a good part-time job because it's not gonna be enough money right uh when you're starting out so you kind of have to yeah. have a good day job you did for a long time oh yeah i worked at best buy for you, a long time then i went yeah. to apple and then i uh if you can work from home it's great oh, yeah. but you have to you, you got to do a work steady paycheck. Yeah, yeah absolutely because uh yeah you're not you're not gonna get you're gonna get a lot of drink tickets <laughs> that's what get you get paid bar, in yep. yeah you're yeah. gonna get a lot of bar tabs <laughs> that where you can get appetizers but not entrees <laughs> <laughs> you can get you can get two sides, but but not but no steak, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's that's what you're, that's what you're getting paid in. So it's and both both ways of doing it have uh, pluses and minuses. Right. You know, Sharpie, same thing. Sharpie had a day job. He hated it. Yes, he did. But it set him up for success at Comedy Works to be able to sign up there whenever yeah. because he wasn't trying to get paid gigs. So because he, he was able to do that right. via comedy. Right. It's just. And so there's there's more and there's sacrifice with it too. There is because you're you're waking you, you up early, wake up, so you're going you to bed late and waking up early. You can't stay out as late. Right. You can't. You you maybe you kind of have to kick cut, it shit face cut the, every yeah, night. You can't because you got to no, go to work. You'll get the next fired. Day. You'll get right. fired from your day job. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then you're trying to share a bed with me and Sam, and there's no room. <laughs> and and let's be honest, it's not a bag. It, it, it's a beanbag chair. Right. <laughs> it's, a love sa- it's a knockoff love sack. <laughs> 
not even a real love sack. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, so so to all you new comedians out there, uh, if, if you don't have a job, get one uh, or do what this guy did and just go rob a bank. So, yeah, I guess <laughs> this would be – unfortunately, it's not a viable third option, but the third option <laughs> – in how, in how to get started in stand up would be if you can really grab He's got a, a TV big credit. score. Yeah, He's you grab, been on NBC now. So. <laughs> you grab a big score and then and rob a bank or you know yeah rob rob a house. They know, say viral videos then, really get you. They put butts in seats. So <laughs> yeah, if you can't if you can't become a YouTube celebrity, <laughs> then rob a bank. Then you've got that money up front so that you can you know you have, you have the rent oh, set man. aside. You've got some gas for your car. <laughs> and then you can take those free gigs. So he he had the right idea is that you need money in order to do stand up <laughs> because it costs. You he did a lot of research before you know diving right. into. <laughs> but then <laughs> that he robbed a bank. Yeah, I read that he robbed I read the board bank. Standing up. <laughs> he he robbed. <laughs> Yeah, you can either start out doing four shows a night, trying to do magic, like Steve Martin did. <laughs> Or you can t- try to take a shortcut, and you can rob Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> <laughs> you try to pull off a big heist. Oh, God. And then, yeah, you you might be setting yourself up for uh, success, <laughs> but it's a long shot. Because, yeah, he got a dye pack. He and did. I think that's part of it. He did. For why he got naked. He, the dye. So <laughs> so what happened? So what? this is his thought process. I, I He robs, robs a, a bank. bank. He's got the money. 7500 bucks. The, the, the dye bank. The dye pack explodes on him. You don't want to be the guy, you know, with that die, with die on you because it's obvious that you robbed a bank. So you take those clothes off. So now you're not the guy with die on him. You're the naked guy <laughs> running down the street with a bag of money. Where did he get the money? I don't know. He didn't rob a bank. And how thick? And how how how, how thick was this ink that's on him to where he's like, all right, he doesn't leave his underwear on, or is he just going commando when he robs a bank? Right. Like, oh, he's like, I got no, you. I like the feet. Like, cause he he could have left like just underwear, <laughs> underwear and shoes and on. Shoes. Then maybe he's just on a jog. Yeah. But he's like, no, nah, if, if we're doing it, we're committing to it. <laughs> or he robbed this bo- this bank commando. Yeah. Which is an even weirder thing to right, do. Right. Yeah. I don't know. He's like, I well. Guess- I like the feel of jeans on my dong when I'm robbing a bank. <laughs> Quicker getaway. One less article of clothing that could get snagged on something and hold you back. I don't know. That yeah, that is funny. Didn't want to get a wedgie when he was when he was trying to But he was, yeah, I saw it. did you see the videos uh-huh. where he's just running? Just running down naked, the throwing money out. And he was throwing money <laughs> around, yeah. So yeah, he's paid he's paid more people than Steve Hofstetter. That's, so that's Jesus. nice. He, he 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 started giving back right away. That's an inside joke. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, so so this happened at Regions Bank at 100 Southeast Third Avenue in uh, Fort Lauderdale Bank. Uh, again, if anybody was there to saw this, send in your stories. I'd love to to, to see what you saw. Uh, he started, but here's the other thing. He took off all of his clothes because the, uh, the 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 dye pack exploded on his clothes. Uh, but also all over a cast on his wrist. Oh, you're right. He had broken yeah. his hand, so he had a cast on his wrist, <laughs> and he couldn't take that off. And then he, no. so he's just running, which I feel like that's a bad call on his. Like, wouldn't you want to wait till the hand is healed? Right. So you don't have a thing that's just like, this yeah. is me. Don't, yeah, don't Some come in. Some identifying object. Don't come in, yeah, with an easily identifiable weakness <laughs> or personality trait yeah that you can't hide <laughs> yeah that was a weird move it's like hey one, maybe you sh- should have started a gofundme to take care of the broken hand <laughs> then you rob the bank you know or you use the extra gofundme money to start you know, comedy to, well no well yeah that would make sense too <laughs> that would make i'm still thinking sense. rob a bank so i'm thinking you hire a getaway guy with the gofundme money ah, a getaway driver a yeah, baby driver a baby driver if you or, will. or an adult but either way a driver so that you're not running down the street <laughs> Money, he could have been. Money. He could have been a guy that was in a car naked, throwing money out the window, and it would have been less uh, conspicuous. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking, but it, it is funny to think that that was going to be his. Uh, it really, I mean, instead of instead of a GoFundMe, he robbed a bank. <laughs> <laughs> and I respect him more so than go anybody. GoFundMe, it's no, you fund me. <laughs> I, re- I respect that more than anybody that started a GoFundMe in order to live their dream of. Being able to do stand-up comedy without uh, without having, having to a support themselves, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I just need this fund me to get a getaway driver, so I. <laughs> <laughs> That's more of a thought-out plan, I think, <coughs> than just give me money so that I don't have to have a job, <laughs> so that I can drink and and I but uh, while still being able to drink at these open mics that I'm hitting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be a legend at the at the Lion's Lair. 
Go lund me. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. That's what I say. <laughs> uh, so uh, he didn't get very far either because authorities got him. Uh, so he was arrested at the, the 100 Southeast 3rd Avenue uh, is where the bank was. He was arrested at 800 Northeast 4th Avenue. So He, he was trying to get headshots he, real quick. He's <laughs> like, I know that I need headshots on a website. So if you could, he'd immediately try to get headshots. He was like, do you know anything about web design? Could you help me with that? <laughs> oh, I'm, God. I feel like I'll do that. SEO guy is like, well, you know, what you could do. You could uh, go rob a bank and then run around naked, and then we got a good video for you. Yeah, I've, yeah, we could call the website <laughs> nakedbankrobber.com slash comedy. <laughs> you could have a comedy tab, and then they'll be they'll, the people will know to check out your comedy <laughs> after they look up <laughs> naked bank robber guy. <laughs> He did a good job of branding himself. Oh, man. Well, l- look for him on America's Got Talent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the prison edition. Uh, he, uh, so, so, so authorities asked him why he decided to rob a bank, uh, and he, he, he told them because he wanted to begin his career as a comedian. And, you gotta uh, start. Yeah, you gotta start. You gotta somewhere. start somewhere. I like that. <laughs> I like that. That's good. That is a bit of encouragement for all of our young comedians out there. <laughs> is how, how do you get to sing sing <laughs> practice? <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure that you go to like a credit union and not like a fully a full bank because mm-hmm. I feel like that would be a little bit easier to sneak out of. Credit unions, yeah. I don't know if they spring for die packs. Their, their die packs <laughs> are uh, are uh, 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 washable. Are washable. <laughs> They're biodegradable dye packs. You can right. just wash them off. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, not as not as uh, industrial grade <laughs> at the credit union. So yeah, he messed up oh, in that man. regard. <laughs> oh god. Oh man. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for joining us, the Denver comedy champion, right here on Information. That's um, right. It's a real thing. This is. Uh, this episode will come out um, in a. Yeah, I may move it up, so nothing uh, too guaranteed here. But do you have anything you want us to promote or any uh, Facebook or s- social media you want us to get out there? Uh, Yeah, you know, I have a lot of friends on Facebook, which is great. I'm on Facebook, but uh, on Twitter, uh, my handle is at Nathan Lund. Uh, on Instagram, my handle is uh, Nathan Lund Comedy. So, uh, Isn't it Lund Shots? No, I changed it. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, I changed it uh, because I figured, why not get Nathan <laughs> Lund in there? Uh, I did lunch shots at first because Nathan Lund was taken, and that's what I wanted. But uh, yeah, I figured uh, if I, you know, if I get more and more people on Instagram, I want to have the full name, so I'm a little yeah. easier to find. So yeah, it's Nathan Lund comedy now. And uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of uh, Lucha Libre and Laugh shows that yeah, happen at fanta- the Orient. We had Alabaster Kane on here with the progressive liberal wrestler. Oh, okay. Uh, we had <laughs> them on. Uh, in fact, that's uh, that's coming out tomorrow, uh, August okay. 8th, uh, for episode two. Uh, and th- that was interesting. Lucha Libre and Laughs happens at, at the Oriental. Uh, what is it? The It's once a month, right? Yeah. We've, we've, we, we, we were on Sundays. Uh, we've been on Fridays. So we kind of bounced around. The Friday show is real fun. But I yeah, but yeah, we're we're at the Oriental pretty much every month, and then uh, we'll also have probably another show or two at Ratio Beer Works because they have an outdoor yep. back patio that's yep. great uh, for for some summer fun. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll keep doing the the Oriental shows uh, after the after summer. We'll yeah. we'll focus more on on the Oriental shows because we won't be able to be outside as much. Yeah, nice. yeah, probably after uh, September. Cool. And is there a um, website for that, or just Google Lucha Libre and Laughs? Mm, I don't know if, uh, but we're, we're on Twitter and Facebook. Okay. Uh, Lucha Libre and Laughs. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it should be pretty easy to find. Twitter and Facebook. All right. Well, thank you very much, Nathan Lund. Uh, make sure you follow him uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Nathan Lund and at Nathan Lund Comedy, uh, both respectively. And uh, this, thank you again for, uh, for for joining us here for this excellent excellent show uh make sure you follow us on facebook the podcast comes out every single tuesday uh and a big shout out to uh our sponsors sexpot comedy for helping us put out this uh to the world there and to the masses um i hope you had fun uh we're gonna wrap it up with a little bit of, of noise from the beastie boys uh from again from that great album the in sounds from the way out Uh, So make sure you check that out. Again, thank you all for tuning in. This has been Information. We'll see you next week. Good night. Good night.